Hello everybody, Average Gamer, and welcome to a tutorial where this is, I think, my fifth, sixteenth time trying to do this recording. Um, because I keep doing all sorts of little things that keep bothering me. But anyways, so today we're gonna be doing um kind of a myth busting slash um tutorial about amphibious invasions and really how amphibious amphibious invasions can be done, both properly and kind of how I want to say 80%, maybe 90% of players in the Supreme Ruler community play when it comes to amphibious invasion. So we all know of the classic, we're going to declare war here on South Carolina in a second, but we all know obviously how most people do amphibious invasions, right? You select your, gra your, your ground units, you go to sea transport and you pick a coastline. So we're going to go just off the coast of uh, South Carolina here. We're going to send all our units. This is usually the way it happens, right? Usually we'll send, you know, a couple warships maybe. Uh, are you? Okay, we'll wait till everyone gets here. And everyone's there. You declare war on the country you want to declare war on. You then land your troops at the port you want to attack. And you just keep moving forward, right? Capture the capital. We took their capital. Keep moving up. We took their capital. Uh, just keep following where the capital is. Capital. Oh, that was kind of easy. Uh, let's move down here real quick. And then head this way. We took their capital. And let them. Oh, they haven't they haven't surrendered yet. We took their capital. And there you go. Annex the territory. And congratulations, we now control um one of the carolinas now that's the usual way everyone invades right mass troops all that stuff depending on um the situation right i mean i've got units that are ridiculously advanced for for the era and stuff like that but usually when doing invasions like this you need massive amounts of firepower massive amounts of manpower in comparison to the country you're invading right you need to basically overwhelm them at the point of invasion in this case, the port, where they're going to have garrison units to stop you almost immediately. And then on top of that, any if there's if there's a barracks, which 9 times out of 10 there will be, you know, they all basically put 100% effort into stopping you. And if you can't capture that port, your entire, basically, group is done. Sometimes your troops will land and then go around it, whatever, but you're kind of stuck on that port. Well, what I'm going to show you today is... I call it the, um, the the Normandy model of how invasions can be done in this game and to a point almost realistically. So what I have here is an already pre-designed little system. You probably have already seen over here. What we're going to do is we're going to land, um, we're going to take Cuba, but we're going to go do it with um, four stacks of infantry or four battle groups. Um, technically a fifth one, but the fifth one will be just for construction. Um, that's going to build me a port here at Sagra La Grande. Um, or sorry, a pier. To then supply our units so we can then push in a la the CBs from uh, D-Day and uh, building of ports temporarily so you can push in ground and all that stuff or inland. Now you can do this Anywhere along the coastline, your units will have to build, though, the military facility first. So they'll have to build this first, the military complex first, and then they'll be able to build a port. Problem there is that it, that takes longer time, right? So it's easier to capture a town, use two stacks of um, engineers, which, I, which I'll have here, and your, in, your, your four stacks of infantry. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through the whole step of landing forces around this around this town landing our engineers there capturing the territory first and uh well doing the amphibious invasion because right now you're probably looking at it going well hold on like there's no port gtf or wtf <laughs> what's going on so here's what we're going to do number one i'm going to show you the unit or the type of unit you want to build so um i don't have it turned on but You'll see here, for example, on this unit that the, the state of Florida can build, it has an icon. That icon is can unload away from dock. 
That means that this unit can basically pull up to a port to a to a beach, open the front of it, and just let your units pour out. So right there is a door. You can kind of see the line going down. It opens up, and all your units come out. Now, one of the ways to do this is, well, I, well, actually, there's only one way to do this, but we'll, we'll get into that secondly, firstly, or uh, just just shortly. But well, you know what? Let's just get into it, shall we? So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell this guy here to load my engineers. You notice there's a little truck because he's full of troops. Now, you are going to do the same thing. You're going to load units that are there. I'm going to bring you guys down. I'm going to bring you guys down. And... Bada boom. There we go. So now we have our battle groups. Now, the battle groups... The reason why I've set up battle groups is because I want to be able to tell these units quickly to entrench when they land. That's the key thing. They need to entrench the moment they land so they can hold the locations while our CBs build our port. So with that in mind, I just need to figure out which ones are which. Uh, that's you. That's you. And I think this one here is going to be the third one. Yep. So we're going to highlight all these guys. If you haven't seen this before, you can create them in a battle group. Done. And we're going to call this one just so we know. I double clicked on it by accident. We're going to rename it incorrectly. Landing group. Or actually, landing force, sorry. Four. So now we have our four landing forces. Now we have our engineers as well, which actually, now that I think about it, I'm going to just highlight them all. Create a group here as well. Call this CBs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're just going to go there for the moment. Pick one of my ships and say load those seven, please. Thank you. And then actually grabbed a couple extra ones from up here. That's no big deal. Then you are going to load the remainder. Thank you. So our CBs are now good to go. Now the plan is for our landing forces, they're going to immediately entrench. So what we can now do as well is get the ship that we want and say load everything here. Tell battle group number one, highlight it and order it to that location. And everyone goes in that ship. Well, there we go. Landing force one is in ship number one. Now, landing force two is going to go in ship number two. And there we go. Then we got obviously ship three and group three. Last but not least, group four. Actually, you can just move there as well. And there we go. Now, one of the things I don't usually do um, is my paratroopers. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to use paratroopers with the stealth order to not con not to capture territory to actually capture the land around where I want to land my troops initially. So, I've got three already set up. And what I've basically done is I've gone into the ROE, or Rules of Engagement, screen here and told them all to use Stealth Approach. So they will not capture territory for me. Load into uh, and this guy right here. So you can see with the little truck, everybody is loaded up here. So we have our four ships, our paratroopers, and our engineers all ready to go. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick our ships. I'm going to go off the coast here. Now, normally what you would do is get, you know, destroyers and battleships and all that stuff. They would be sitting there ready to go to bombard a target. There we go. When they can bombard the target, they'll be ready to go. Now, one of the good things is you can highlight the ship and see. So this is actually group two. This is actually group one. So we're going to just switch them. 
your group three and hover over again your group four okay so we want to make sure because you group one is going to go here group two is going to land there group three is going to land there and then group four is going to land right there our engineers will then land secondly i'm sorry thirdly but firstly we're going to have these guys come down first they're going to fly over to that air base there we go they're going to do their thing so first we need to declare war and then we're going to tell each one of these guys hey do me a favor and unload there you are going to unload there you are going to unload there and you are going to unload there now what might happen this is a possibility and believe me it occurs is when these groups when these units land this town if it has garrisons will see the special forces or the light infantry that i've dropped on either side of it so we need to be prepared to land these troops in this town so we're going to go to normal mode and just as these guys get to this point so i can see okay there are units there's specifically mounted infantry that's no problem i'm going to order you now to go and unload you to go and unload you to go and unload you to go and unload as well you guys to unload as well and we're actually going to go to slow so we should see yep so they are engaging they are bringing in some troops that's no big deal for us so here we go so we've already got our first guy so we're going to order all of these guys immediately into construction to that location Lending Force 2 is being ordered to entrench. And we can actually do that this way. So Group 2, which actually still has... Nope, we're good there. So Lending Force 2 has landed. Double click. Click the unit order. Click Entrench. Uh, and group 4 has landed. Double click. Come over here. Entrench. Hit pause again. Uh, this is unit one, right? Yep, unit one is landed not where it's supposed to be, which is very authentic in my eyes. They're all being ordered to entrench there. And group three is now landed as well. And they're all being ordered to entrench there. Now, our, our infantry units, or specifically our combat engineers, are now officially in construction mode in this village. So what we're going to do is we're going to right-click, Go to build, go to military, and go to C pier, and build ourselves a C pier. And we're gonna wait. Now I believe. Now what will happen is our light infantry units, which is if we played this right, should move up a little bit. Oh, no, we're good there. We're gonna use them basically to spot. And there should be an extra one here, right? Group three and five are there. Oh, did we lose a light infantry unit? No, we did not lose a light infantry unit. There's two there. None there. One thing that you can do is you can highlight a unit. Filter selection all in this view. Oh, okay, it's over here. There it is. And it's going to entrench there as well. Now, they won't really capture territory, but they'll use their line of sight to basically help our artillery and things like that. Now, this might actually go a little faster. We see they're bringing a lot of units to bear, which to us, no big deal. 
We'll go to fast. The sea pier should be built. No, mind you. There we go. So it's going to take 23 days. So we basically just need to hold out, which is no big deal, right? So we're going to take Landing Force 1. We're ordering them up to that location. Landing Force 2. Now, they do have supply trucks. We're going to entrench up one more. Landing Group 3 is going to come up and entrench in this town over here. And Group 4 is going to move up as well and entrench there. Now, what will happen... is oh look at that we lost one ship and we lost an mlrs that's no big deal we're going to order our ships out of territory and i'm also going to order this just to go to normal our ships are going to withdraw i'm going to pause tell them to go there and then these guys who all have their supply are now going to be changed up so they are now going to escort Shield a truck. Escort. Shield a truck. Escort. Shield a truck. Last but not least. Escort. Shield a truck. Now they'll come down and they'll basically rearm and refuel them. Now, there is a possibility with this that your aircraft may or may not get shot down. So, at this point, you should have air superiority. I do not, because um, I didn't build aircraft, because I was not thinking that far ahead tutorial-wise. But, theoretically, you'd have some really good warships off your coast and some aircraft. And that keeps your ground units here in supply. So, right now, we're sitting at a 99% supply rate, which is really good. Our engineers are building our sea pier. We're sitting at a 23 days until the pier is built. What we're going to do is we're going to go to very fast. See, our ground units are still at 99% because they are now being supplied. Basically, we're dropping our supply from our ships. If we go to our air units, for example, they're only at 94%. We're looking at we have 18 days remaining until the pier is built. What you can also do too, I'm going to order these guys up. They're going to entrench there. There we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to order these guys to actually do a little bit of guerrilla warfare. What these units are basically going to do is cause problems now for reserves. They're going to cause problems for any anything that's actually going to come out. So now what you can do really well here, let me pause here, is recon units. Recon units are really good for this stealth because you can just order them into enemy territory and they'll just keep an eye on everything on the other side. And it's really good actually. We're sitting at uh, nine days remaining, or six days remaining, until that's done. So we're just going to go to fastest for now. And basically what's happening is now our MLRS units are now landing rounds around these guys for us. And there we go. So you now see that our supply is out 36% from the previous 3%. Now what you can also do is build military. Build a supply depot. And uh, we're just going to build an airfield. We have our two stacks of units here. So you'll see pretty quickly that we can now build a nice little foothold. Our artillery is now hitting the Cuban military. 
So these guys are using their line of sight. So if you actually bring up their little thing here. Uh, where is it? Oh, combat time. There it is. So they can see 41 kilometers. So if you use your little mark line here, they can actually see units that are within basically two hexes of them. Well, as you can see here. There we go. Air base is done. Oh. Well, we just lost our ships there, but that's no big deal. If I had a proper navy... I, I, well, you know what? Well, I don't have a proper navy. Didn't really plan that far ahead. But, yeah. There we go. Supply is now moving around. Our supply is now 61%. So now what we can do start our official invasion. So landing force one. You're now going to move up. You're going to entrench there. Landing group two. You're going to move up and entrench there temporarily. Group three. You're going to move down and entrench there. Group four. You're going to move up and entrench there. And my CBs. They are going to go into reserve right there for now. Now we're going to pause and we're going to say, okay, so hold on. This infantry unit can now see ahead of time. So can that one. You're both going to move up. You're going to move over there. You're going to move down over here. Uh, group two. You're now going to move up and you're going to entrench to that location. Three. It's gonna move up there. Oh. So now we're using our light infantry as basically line of sight. Oh, what are you? Oh, you're part of two. Okay. Group one. You're also now gonna move up. Now, actually, an entrench there. So now the best part is, I have these guys using their line of sight to target here, and the MLRS that are here. Oh, let's um. Oh, those are F oh, that's an S four hundred. That's actually a very good anti aircraft unit, which is no big deal now because I can actually order all my aircraft that are here to just go back. It looks like I may have lost an aircraft. That's no big deal. Um, oh, what did you guys do? Oh, I don't have a barracks there. That's why you're going into uh, reserve. Okay. Do me a favor and land there for me instead. Remove one up. You're going to entrench there. Group two. You're going to entrench there. Um, this infantry unit, I'm going to try and sneak past. You guys are going to move up to there. You're going to move up to that rail line. You are going to go there next. Four is going to entrench along the rail line. Right now, this guy doesn't really have the ability to get around anybody. He will. Because he's ordered to get past them, basically. There we go. Use your line of sight and yours. That's Force 1. He's going to entrench there. That's Force 2. He's going to entrench there. You... We need to get moving. There we go. Lots of artillery. Oh, 
Both our infantry units there moved up, which is good. You're now going to entrench in that little town there. Every now and then you'll get little issues with artillery and things like that, and that's no big deal. Four. I want you to entrench there. So we have our units here that are pretty much at the capital. Because we're using these guys for line of sight, we are laughing. True is going true. <laughs> Two is gonna entrench there. You're gonna move up and entrench there. So we now have the Cuban capital. It should relocate. It might they might just surrender. Uh, you are going to go over here real quick and just give this guy some... There we go. Thank you. And there we go. Cuba has surrendered. We lost some warships only because I really didn't pay attention all that great. Um, but yeah, so there you go. A proper amphibious invasion with CBs. So once again, basically you get the amount of beaches you want to well actually let's reload this real quick so basically what you do is you look at how many beaches you want to take and you get one ship per beach a nice stack a mix of infantry or mostly infantry then some recon some armor anti-armor artillery long and short range artillery you know mortars and ballistic artillery mlrs slash rocket artillery um or really really long range ballistic artillery which is very rare not many of them units in the game. Um, some anti-aircraft units. Now, I picked the Thad here, for example, only because it's good for all three. Um, you can change it up and pick something that's more... Let's bring up... You can look for something that's mostly mostly for uh, mid-air. You can bring in more than one piece of artillery, one that's good for close range, another one that specifically is good for mid-air. I just picked that because it's a lot easier. But you can really mix this up. Um, most of the time, what I'll do is I'll do... Minimum of five infantry, two artillery, two anti-air, two support, two armor, or one armor, one anti-armor, or two armor, two anti-armor. Um, overall, I figure 15 units is a good little build-up. Because if you get hit by artillery um, with the enemy nation, you won't take too much in damage. The, the smaller that group is, obviously the better it is. But yeah, so there are the two types of amphibious invasions. There is the classic, as I call it, click and spam. Or click and drag method, which is most of the method people play in the game nowadays. And then there is the more authentic, historical amphibious invasion. Um, but with that in mind, thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you guys in the next live stream, uh, which will be uh, every Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard for Supreme Ruler Ultimate. See you guys then. Bye-bye.